Murders are always disturbing, but some are even worse than that. These killings were brutal, almost unimaginable in their depravity. The crimes horrified communities and stumped police, leaving questions that lingered for decades afterwards. As years passed, without an arrest or even a credible suspect. These are unsolved murders from the 1960s. On January 1968, five-month-old Kimberly Jackson was taken in her pram from outside the back door of her home in Carmel Gardens, Norton, County Durham. She was found an hour and a half later, drowned in water at nearby Bidland Bottoms. A teenage boy was seen pushing the pram and it was abandoned in Amble View, a short distance from where Kimberly was found. The mum, Sandra Jean, had seen a teenage boy pushing a pram like hers past the flats on Carmel Gardens, but thought nothing of it. He was around 14 years old and wore a long green anorak with a hood. But just moments later, after running her bath, and making Kimberly's bottle, her mum was horrified to see the pram had gone. The rattles which Kimberly had been playing with had been dumped in the alley beside the flats, presumably so the killer could escape unheard. According to reports, the pram was found abandoned on a small parking area at Amble View, which overlooks Billingham Bottoms. The baby's body was found shortly after. A murder investigation was launched, which led to a nationwide hunt. Kimberly's grief-stricken mum visited schools across Teesside, trying to identify the boy responsible. But tragically, Kimberly's killer, to this day, has never been caught. On the 9th of October 1965, the body of 14-year-old Elsie Frost was found with fatal stab wounds. A subsequent investigation turned up one suspect who was later released. After this, there was no further investigation and details of the case were made exempt from a Freedom of Information request. The siblings of Elsie filled in a Freedom of Information request when the original exemption date was coming to an end, only to find the exemption to be extended until 2016. The case was reopened in 2015 after a series of reports on BBC Radio 4. Convicted child murderer Peter Pickering a man in his late 70s was arrested in September 2016 on suspicion of murder, more than 50 years after Elsie's death. He was expected to be charged with Elsie's death, but died before police could do so. Linda Cook, a 22-year-old on the verge of relocating to Leeds to live in her father's property, due to having separated from her husband, was staying at a friend's flat, but never returned after telling him she was going to see her ex-employer, a local doctor whose surgery she had been working as a receptionist. A milkman found her strangled to death in Green Lane the next day. Police interviewed thousands of people about the murder of Red Car Woman, but the information given to them during those interviews failed to lead to an arrest will enable them to build up a detailed picture of her last movements. On October 1967, the body of 54-year-old solicitor Herbert Wilkinson was discovered in a shallow grave alongside the Trenton Mersey Canal at Watcroft. Wilkinson, who had been struck off by the Law Society seven months earlier, had disappeared on the 2nd of June after scribbling a note to his housekeeper. Based on the remote location, police believe Wilkinson had been taken there by boat. Beyond that, nothing could be determined and a coroner's inquest in March 1968 returned a verdict of murder by a person or persons unknown. Twelve-year-old Keith Lyon was stabbed to death on a bridleway that links the villages of Oving Dean and Wooding Dean near Brighton on the 6th of the May 1967. Despite arrests in connection with Keith's death as recently as 2006, no one has ever been charged with his murder. On 
On 12th November 1967, the body of Rita Ellis was found partially hidden under leaves and foliage at Roborough Crops, part of the RAF Halton Estate. Ellis, who was in the WRAF and had worked in the catering department of the RAF hospital on the camp, had been beaten, sexually assaulted and strangled. She was last seen on the previous evening, the 11th November. The case was reopened in 2017 for a second time, although new DNA techniques have meant the police now have a DNA profile of the killer. Bernard Oliver, 17, disappeared on 6th of January 1967 and his dismembered body was found in suitcases near Tattingstone, Ipswich, 10 days later. No one has been charged over his murder, but Suffolk Police stated in January 2017 that DNA evidence may help to yield some clues. 50 years on. On January 1961, Linda Smith of Polstead, Suffolk, was talking to a cobbler in the main street of that village when she was last seen alive. A retired farm worker found her body in the Suffolk countryside four days later and wrapped tightly around her neck was a scarf that had been used to strangle her, her own school scarf. There has never been an arrest in connection with this murder. On December 1961, 27-year-old Maureen Dutton died in the presence of her sons, both under three years of age, when she was repeatedly stabbed in their house on Thingwall Lane, Notty Ash, within four weeks of giving birth to the younger of the two. The murderer did not leave the house with anything belonging to any of the Duttons and seemed to have gained entry to it by Maureen entering the front door. Three people who remained unidentified became suspects. A young male bogus doctor had visited a woman at her Howard address to offer postnatal care. A young man seen running along Thingwall Lane and vomiting outside a nearby church. And a young Irish woman heard muttering on a bus that she had to leave Liverpool as a matter of urgency because she had done something terrible and was going to catch a plane from London. To this day, there has been no breakthrough or any information leading to any arrests on the case.